A lot of people have been asking what's the best way to get get your uh, work up on YouTube, and I thought I'd give you um, a couple of pointers of what I do. Um, there's a band in San Francisco called Zoo Station. It's a great um, U2 cover band, and I've actually done some work for them, um, shooting some uh, videos and posting them online. So here's uh, here's one of their um, songs. They uh, covered a song called Ultraviolet at a place called the Red Devil Lounge in San Francisco. So here's my workflow. First, you cut the video. The next thing you do is you come down here and you go File, Export, or there's now a keyboard shortcut, thankfully, in Final Cut 7, and you do uh, QuickTime Movie, Export QuickTime Movie. Now the thing about doing this is you don't want to be afraid of making big files. If you don't have enough hard drive space, you should get more. Hard drives are cheap now, but you're going to make some big files. This is a um, DVC Pro HD timeline, and uh, basically you're going to make a self-contained movie, and you're going to kick the thing out. Now, I've already done it, so I want to show you that. Here's the movie kicked out of um, Final Cut, and it's a 720p timeline. If I do Command-I, uh, get info, I can see it's a DVC Pro HD timeline. It's uh, it's big. It's 2.3 gigs. That's understandable. But um, and it's a big file. Uh, but it's full resolution. It's full raster, and it's a self-contained movie. Now the reason I do a self-contained movie is from this one file I can source anything I need. I can make a phone a file for the phone. I can make a file for YouTube. I can put a little Windows Media file online for uh, some client to uh, approve whatever if they want Windows Media. But it's just make the file. Just make a big file, and from there you'll make other things. And you know that being said, I mean I've literally made files that are 60, 80, 100 gigs. Sometimes you have to do it. Now from QuickTime, here's what we're going to do. What you want to do is you do um, uh, Command E to export. You pick where you want to put it. I put it in my compressions folder. You pick Movie to QuickTime Movie down here, and click your options. Now, from options is where you do all your business. The you got your video, audio, and prepare for internet internet streaming. I put this on fast, fast start. Um, it helps things, uh, amazingly enough, start faster when they're streaming. It doesn't matter when it's going to YouTube, but I just do it anyway. Um, I give it all the uh, all the audio gas. Actually, no, we're not going to do that. We could do AAC. Uh, stereo, you could do 48, 41. I, honestly, I don't really hear the difference, um, but you know, too much loud music for me through the years. Um, at least 128. Um, you know, keep your audio quality up there. But but this is music, so this is stereo. So I'm going to click OK. Now the video is where everybody always trips up. So let's take a look at these. First of all, you got settings, filter, and size. First thing I'll say is, I never use the filter setting. Make your stuff look right in Final Cut. You should never have to go into here. That's that's my own feeling. You do whatever you want. Settings. This is where you're going to set your video settings. Under compression type, you're going to choose H.264 because that's what YouTube wants. Restrict to. This is the real magic. You can make this number really high. Let's say we do 65 or uh, 6,000 or 6,500. Whatever you want to do, you can crank that thing up because really all you have to do is come under the maximum file size that YouTube asks for. And I think their current maximum file size is, I don't know, you need to look it up. It's a few hundred megs, maybe it's a gig, I can't remember. But you can make that thing as big as you want. Under keyframes, always set this to automatic. Now here's a, here's a gotcha. If I change this to say 5K, and hit tab, you notice this automatically goes to every. You want this on automatic, and I'm gonna go to 60, well, you gotta come back and set it at automatic. Frame rate, I'm gonna keep it at the current frame rate. Here's an important one. Best quality, multi-pass. Multi-pass takes twice as long, and it looks twice as good. If you want real good quality, put it on best quality multi-pass. Uh, this thing doesn't even slide. It's it's fake. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to click OK. I did my audio. We talked about fast start. We did video. Click OK. At this point, you're ready to kick that thing out. So I can hit save, and it's going to take take a long time. Here's another cool trick in QuickTime Player uh, 7. I can now, even though this is exporting, and I'm going to move this over here just so I can see it in the background. E I, I'll put it right here. 
even though that thing is exporting, guess what? Command E, I can I can export something else. If I wanted to come down here and say kick out my Windows media file at the same time, I can hit save and check that out. I'm doing multiple exports at once. A lot of people don't realize that in QuickTime 7. So that's the file that you want to upload to uh, YouTube. Go through their little uploader. Uh, again, the bit rate is where you can really get some extra quality and make sure you're on um, uh, multi-pass uh, best quality on the video settings. So that's how you make the best quality uh, stuff for YouTube.